everybody, Sonic64 here with the next part of Fast. I'm gonna cut out that voice unless I have a reason Picked to use traces of other cores while the kid was out. To the sundown path. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts Great. digging away under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Kid thinks twice about risking his hide for him, though. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security is all fired up. Quick and careful is the only way to go. Uh -huh. See, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Not so much for noise and tomfoolery. Yeah, that's it. Thankfully, these are at the state. Sky bridges link the path together. One of them bridges whips the kid along. Finds a spyglass. Like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. Here we go. Ah. Great. The calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is, who else could have taken the core? I gotta guess. Oh. Ends with bad. Ends with something bad. Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Mm -hmm. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. Oh, wow. Well. No, they used to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. And grenade. He's wise to toss those things plenty far away. Pretty cool, I think. <laughs> Even gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. I can't get whatever that rock is down there, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think I can get that. Nope. Definitely not. In all this tale, <clears throat> Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? Nah. <sighs> So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. Ah, uh, come on, give the little tiger a break. <laughs> we could always see the stars, we just never could reach them, no matter how high we build. <laughs> Goes the milk. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Ah, I killed him. Of all the plans to survive the calamity. It had to be stab weeds. Had to be stab weeds. The horrible little buggers. Blast the things hurt like a broken heart. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. That's my repeat. He cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it. <laughs> Well, it's past for that. <laughs> oh, I should have switched some hand grenade thinking about. It. Don't really like that thing. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. He throws a switch. Now, what could possibly go, go wrong? wrong? Famous last words. I'm not gonna hear. Some of the stuff lying around was downright dangerous. Quite a bit. As it turns out, the cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All Kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Not every score is born bad. Some spree to the Kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. A little. <clears throat> Scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. Something new. Squirts. Windbag. Squirts. Gas fellas and scumbag are all the same coin. species. Birdie pop that mean old foreman. And I've yeah. They're all the same species, just in different forms of life. At this rate, maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. Hard to tell. tell. That's really dirty. Squirts get real territorial around a the core. Then a shipment of free samples shows up. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the motherland, tax free. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy. A few 
moments left, and the core goes free. Ten, nine, eight, seven. You give or take a few seconds. Give or take. Seconds after it. The core's within reach. And done. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. <laughs> I still remember the look on his face after that one. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Kid packs a special surprise in every one of those arrows. <laughs> Can't be too careful these days. That's it. See. <laughs> that love sounds right about about right to me. I have to do the break of barracks again. Seeing as we have Kid ain't had enough of the breakers barracks. Takes practice, and a mighty strong bow helps too. Clothes, no scotch, seems. I'll try a few more times. He's feeling real proud Crap. of that show. Yeah. One mile. First, faith. I don't want to hit restart. There we go. I almost don't believe it when he says he passed the breaker's challenge. Sometimes a single look says it all. <clears throat> I'll use the hammer. We don't got anything to make a machete knife. The hangar. This probably starting to hurt my throat. I think I'll just talk the dead the welcome him with open arms. Oh dear. <laughs> the calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. He don't much care to see him. 
Not like this. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape, in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions, after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. <sighs> Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Senior. Grady Junior. They didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then... What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue. But he says this. We have to go. Please. <sighs> He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. Rox, that's his name. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. The cores, they remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. This the memorial. memorial. The so kid see? can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. I'm gonna be getting all of these. Okay. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. That's good. Well, anyway, I think I'll see you next time. 
ADA